why don't you come on over this way? Oh, hey, it's Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this here electronic engineering podcast brought to you by eejournal.com. And yes, my name is Amelia, and I have read at least 400 press releases about automotive design this week. Okay, I skimmed. I mean, reading would be a bit of an overstatement. (laughs) Yes, it seems that CES has been taken over by automotive everything. But behind the sparkle and fun of CES lies the important stuff. The software that keeps us safe and secure. And that's exactly where we're headed today. My first guest is longtime fan of Fish Fry, Jim McElroy from LDRA. Jim and I are talking about security vulnerability prevention, the challenges of automotive coding standards, and the power of New England sports. All right, let's go. Hey, Jim, thank you so much for joining me. Hello, thank you very much for having me. No problem. Okay, so we are here to first talk about security, which is a big deal in just about everyone's lives these days. So how particularly is LDRA looking to help with the security challenges out there today? Very good question. First of all, the concern of security is everywhere. That's really happening in every particular industry that we work in. You know, the hacks into homes, financial systems, automobiles, industrial control systems, everything. So for us, where we help is at the software level. And our goal is really to help the software developer prevent security vulnerabilities from entering their code in the first place. So very early in the software development and verification process, we help them write code that is more secure from the ground up. And frankly, you cannot wait until the end to bolt on security later on. So we want to help those developers very early in the cycle. And we do that through a a collection of tools within the LDRA tool suite where we can analyze that code for various security vulnerabilities and give quick feedback to the developer to say, hey, look, you need to go fix this. Otherwise, it could be a problem down the line. All right, Jim, let's talk about another hot topic these days, automotive design. Now, you guys play a big role in that industry as well, right? Yeah, definitely. And security is also uh, having its effect on the automotive industry. First of all, we've been very successful in helping our automotive manufacturer customers and their tier one and tier two suppliers improve their overall software quality through the supply chain. Uh, And that's important because, frankly, safety and security are entering all of our vehicles today, and it, it is a primary concern. So what we've been doing is helping the OEMs or the manufacturers in their tier one, tier two suppliers improve their overall software development process. In fact, recently we announced that we've been working with GM on helping them set up not only their process, but a set of coding standards for their suppliers to comply with that helps them ensure the delivery of high quality software. So we work with them again to define and automate their process for checking for software against those coding standard potential vulnerabilities. But what's kind of neat here is that GM doesn't have just one coding standard, more than one. They have a couple of current coding standards that address the various types of applications that are in the vehicle from high-end applications using C++, maybe the infotainment system, autonomous driving types of applications, all the way down into the low end where they're utilizing C and assembly at the lower levels to control the actual hardware and sensors and and monitor what's going on in the vehicle. So they have coding standards available and appropriate for each type of application. And what we have done is we've taken those coding standards and brought them into our tool suite to help their suppliers automate the process of checking their code against these standards, which will ultimately save the suppliers time and money and giving them the ability to prove that they followed a rigorous software development verification process back to the automotive OEMs. In this particular case, we're talking about GM. Other automotive manufacturers are kind of following suit here. So we see these standards evolving, but also being promoted throughout the software supply chain in the automotive market. And so fundamentally, we're helping them with both safety and security software in the vehicle. And for that matter, in the connected world now that we work, we're also helping that security across the different vehicles where they communicate with each other in vehicle to vehicle communication. So, Jim, what do you think sets LDRA away from the rest of the pack? Fundamentally, it comes down to our company. We've been very much focused on software safety and security from day one, and that has not changed. The reality is that our technology covers more of the software development lifecycle than any of the other products that are on the market. 
We help our customers from requirements, safety, security, functional requirements, all the way through the verification activities and the deployment of that software in their end unit systems and the verification of that software. So we provide that bi-directional traceability throughout the workflow, which is pretty unique. In addition to that, I would say that our expertise enables our customers to automate that process of software development and verification process to save them time and money and also reduce their risk and cost, of course. Cool. Okay, Jim, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, I know you're a big Patriots fan, so what do you think their chances look like for the postseason this year? It's looking good. We'll see as long as everybody stays healthy, but we know football. Things can change very rapidly. Uh, Knock on wood, the Patriots usually have pretty good depth, and uh, they'll be strong in the end if we just want to be able to compete. And uh, we're very excited about our Red Sox, too. But, I'm, you know, it's a little bit difficult around here because most people don't like us because of that. <laughs> and you are right about that, sir. Well, Jim, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me yet again. It is always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Amelia. It was great talking to you. Now let's keep this security theme running with Bill Lamy from Express Logic. Bill and I are talking about the challenges of standard compliance in the IoT space and how Express Logic's Xware IoT platform can help your IoT design security from the bottom up. Let's go. Hi, Bill. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so for my audience who may not know, what is Express Logic all about? Express Logic is traditionally an RTOS vendor, so we're most famous for an RTOS called ThreadX, which has something like 6.2 billion deployments worldwide, according to the VDC. We've been in business since 1996. Over the last six years, we've kind of moved more into a total platform solution. So including file system, network stack, GUI, USB, and especially the IoT protocol. So, you know, now we're, um, you know, probably more known for the x IoT platform, which is powered by ThreadX. So in IoT especially, software safety and security are really important. Now, what are you guys doing in that space in particular? Well, it's interesting you should ask that because we kind of saw this coming back about six years ago. So... Six years ago, we started focusing on our safety, especially towards ThreadX, the RTOS. So at that time, we were one of the first to get SIL-4, ASIL-D, Medical Class C coverage or certification for ThreadX. And over the years since then, we've expanded that to FileX, NetX Duo, ThreadX SMP, and we're also in the process of getting GUI-X and USB-X safety certification. So right now, we're the only RTOS that has SIL-4 level of safety certification, uh, and we're also the only RTOS provider that has all the middleware certified. So we're in a kind of unique position, and it just so happens that that's becoming really, really popular and important for most customers. So, Bill, let's talk a little bit about the challenges surrounding being certified and implementing all of these different safety and security protocols. Yeah, there's lots of challenges there, as we uh, come to know. Luckily, we don't know things going in, so we kind of dive in and learn as we go. But the uh, number one challenge in the safety certification end of things is testing. So to get SIL-4, ASIL-D certification, you have to have 100% statement and branch coverage throughout the product source code. So that means a test suite has to generate tests that exercise every single path and every single combination of conditionals or while statements. So that turns out to be a really tough challenge and, and a big barrier for us and for anyone else doing safety certification. So I imagine this is a moving target kind of question, but have you guys met your goals in terms of safety and security? And what else is on the horizon for Express Logic? Yes. Well, it's kind of like success. It isn't really a destination. It's a, it's a process. So, you know, I don't think we're ever stopping in terms of trying to make our products more safe. The ongoing effort is to finish up with the GUI-X and USB-X safety certification. But then there's other uh, things, too, like our TLS stack. We'll go through safety certification for it. One of the things we have done is we've banded our certification into security as well. So about a year ago, we embarked on an EAL4 Plus common criteria certification for basically our IoT connectivity. So that includes ThreadX, NetX Duo, NetX TLS, and NetX MQTT. 
which is more or less the common cloud connectivity that we see today. And so a year ago, we started that. And then at ARM TechCon just recently, we announced that the certification is finally complete. So we can now offer an EAL4 Plus security certified network connectivity or cloud connectivity. So that's really another area that we've expanded on. But really, uh, you know, safety and security is an ongoing process. So we continue every day to try to make our products safer and more secure. Excellent. Well, Bill, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, I know you enjoy golfing like I do. So, Bill, where's the best place that you've ever played golf? Well, that's a, that's funny because, well, first of all, I should probably qualify. My golfing might not really count in a strict definition of the word golf or golfing because it's it's rather bad. But for us, during the summer months, we golf as a group of us here at Express Logic. We go out one afternoon each week in the summer, but we only go to one course, uh, and that's the Madeiras course in uh, North Poway, uh, California, close to where our office is. To answer your question, I only really go to one golf course. Now, that said, I guess I have been to Torrey Pines, and that's probably my favorite outside of our Madeiras golf course that we uh, typically play at. Very cool. And I actually really only play golf in one place in Portland, so I kind of know what you're talking about. What's funny is you figure if you play at one course, you got to keep getting better and better. And gosh darn it, it doesn't seem to happen for me. Yeah, I think you're on to something there. It seems like I get better and then I get worse and I'm just playing the same course. How could that be? (laughs) Yeah, one great shot, one bad shot. (laughs) Exactly. Well, Bill, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you, Emil. It's been a pleasure. Speaking of IoT, maybe your next IoT design needs to know where it is and where it's going. Then you're going to need some location help. Now, while GPS alone was great in the old days, today's IoT designs need to be compatible with other satellite constellations for the maximum performance. Now, if you're struggling to find just the right location help for your next IoT design, you should really check out a brand new episode of Chalk Talk entitled ST Taseo Lib 3F GNSS Module for IoT Positioning. Now, I sit down with Mike Slade in this episode of Chalk Talk and chat all about the Taseo Lib 3F module, which can make adding location capabilities to your next design a snap with best-in-class performance. Now, you can check out this episode of Chalk Talk by heading on over to the Chalk Talk section of eejournal.com. Can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or you can click the link below the player on this week's Fish Frying page. Or even better, you can head on over to YouTube and use keyword eejournal in that search bar. Now, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. Our Twitter handle is EE Journal TFM. And if LinkedIn is more your thing, well, sure, you can follow us on LinkedIn as well. And we have that YouTube channel I mentioned earlier, keyword EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series. I'm just saying. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Fry and page, you can check out the Fish Fry archive or subscribe to Fish Fry via the iTunes store. And remember, if you want any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Fry and page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology, any fun EE conference coming up that I absolutely should attend, I am looking for sponsorships for next year's CES. Some reason, my uh, trip request just keeps getting turned down. Hmm. <laughs> or even the best geeky hotspot in your city. Shoot me a line at amelia at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of January 11th, 2019, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.